Morgetha's dream pastries from Curse of Strahd are based on a traditional Christmas sweet in the UK called a mincemeat pie. Here's my version based on my grandmother's recipe, who was from St. Ives in the south of England. Okay, let's start. You need two Granny Smith apples, large, finely minced. Uh, you can use another firm tart apple if you need to. Four ounces of golden raisins and four ounces of currants. You can use Zanti currants or regular raisins since black currants really aren't available in the U.S. For the other fruit components, you'll need two ounces of dried cherries minced, two ounces of, of crystallized ginger minced, two ounces of dates sliced with the pits removed, and two ounces of chopped dried figs. If you want to vary the proportions of any of these, you are welcome to, or substitute other dried fruit to your taste. The final fruit component is two ounces of candied lemon peel. You can order this on Amazon, or it may be in the grocery store, but sometimes it's rather seasonal. However, making your own is really easy. Take the skins from a few lemons, add an orange if you'd like, boil them in four changes of water, and then boil them in a simple sugar solution of two cups water, two cups sugar for about a half an hour. The most unusual ingredient in the dream pastries, besides the secret ingredient, is suet. Suet is traditionally made from the kidney fat off of a cow or a lamb, but vegetarian options are very common now too. If you can't purchase it off of Amazon, then simply take either lard or Crisco, any sort of vegetable shortening, and then freeze it. Pull it from the freezer and then grate it with a cheese grater. Just keep it cold until it's time to make and you'll be fine. You need to get the zest and juice of a lemon and orange. I also used a blood orange to be thematically appropriate. Use a strainer if you have one to make sure that you don't get any seeds or pulp in the mixture. The spices are a quarter teaspoon of mace, a quarter teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg, allspice, cloves, and ginger. There's also a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a pinch of salt. It's always best to work from whole spices if you have them. They keep the flavors longer and um, make things more intense. For the sweet components, we have six ounces of dark brown sugar, fortified with an extra ounce or two tablespoons of molasses. You can make the dream pastries alcoholic or non-alcoholic. For the alcoholic version, you're going to want to use one cup of brandy and one ounce or two tablespoons of sweet sherry. For the non-alcoholic version, you're going to use a cup of apple cider and one ounce or two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. When it's all said and done, there's not a lot of difference in the final taste. With everything combined, we go over to the stove top where we'll be cooking this on low. We'll be getting all of the current liquids to either be absorbed by the dried fruit or evaporate to concentrate the flavors. The goal is to make the only main liquid component, the suet, which will melt once this comes up to temperature. 10 minutes into the cook cycle, all of the liquids have combined, but there's been no cooking or absorption at this point. You can see the suet has melted. After 30 minutes, the mixture is going to be really hot and most of the liquid has boiled away except for the suet. It's taken on the rich, dark color of the molasses and the brown sugar, and it's become very fragrant. You want to be really careful with the mixture at this point because it's about 200 degrees and if any of this gets on you, it's going to be really hard to get off of you quickly. And here's the final mincemeat mixture after about 35 minutes of cooking. I'm just going to let it cool, and then it'll go into the refrigerator until I'm ready to actually bake the dream pastries. To make the pie crust, I definitely recommend using a digital scale. I've been using it the whole time to measure all of my ounces for my dried goods, but here it's really important to get the ratios correctly. And speaking of ratios, this is a 3 to 1 ratio pie crust. So that's 3 parts flour to 2 parts fat to 1 part water. 
As we make the pie crust, it's really important to keep everything cold. That includes the water, that includes the fat. So here we go. 12 ounces of all-purpose flour, eight ounces of a fat. I'm gonna blend butter and lard just to get the best balance of buttery, tender flakiness. Four ounces of ice water, a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of sugar. With the dry goods all mixed, you wanna gently rub with your fingertips the flour into the bits of fat, just until it becomes this pea-sized bread crummy like mixture. This is when you know you've got it perfect, and then you'll be ready to add in the ice water. If the fat starts melting, put it all back in the refrigerator and start again when it's cold. I'm going to just gently mix everything together to bring it into one clump. You're not trying to overbeat it. That will actually make the crust tough. Once it comes together, wrap it in plastic wrap and stick it in the refrigerator for 20 to 30 minutes. Overnight is even better. Don't worry about seeing bits of fat streaking through it. That's totally normal. You could do it the manual way, but you can also use a food processor to make it even easier. It just takes 15 to 20 pulses or until all of the ingredients come together. As before, wrap it up in plastic wrap and stick it in the refrigerator for at least 20 to 30 minutes. All right, now it's time to bake. You're gonna have the dough chilled for at least a half an hour, overnight's even better, and the oven is preheated to 400 degrees. Of course, you'll need the dough, as well as some butter or Pam or something to lubricate and grease the, the tart or pie tins. You'll need some flour for dusting the surfaces and keeping the, the dough from sticking. Some granulated sugar for crisping the top. And I used a little confectioner sugar to replace the secret ingredient if you don't actually have it. Okay, time to roll it out the dough. Quarter it, using a bench scraper makes it really easy, and then roll it out to about an eighth of an inch thick. It's really helpful if you have a rolling pin that has the guides on it to ensure a nice and even thickness. Make sure you're keeping it dusted with flour constantly so that nothing sticks. Use a cup or a bowl or something to cut out circles that are gonna be larger than what you're containing the pies in. So I'm using three inch pie tins. I cut out a four inch circle. Use a fork to dock the bottoms of the little pie crusts and then put your mincemeat filling in. You'll need an egg wash for this next bit. So have that ready. Then sprinkle Morgantha's special ingredient on top or some confectioner sugar and then brush some of the egg wash around the edges of the pie crust. The top pie crust on and be sure to pinch it to seal it up. You can flute it or do anything really cool here if you're uh, especially creative with baking. Give the tops of the pies another bit of egg wash. Sprinkle some granulated sugar or cinnamon sugar on top and then use a knife to cut vents to let the steam out. Now lather, rinse, and repeat. Make all of the pies that you can make. I actually found that I didn't have enough pie crust, so I would recommend doubling the pie crust recipe so that you have more than enough to use as much of the mincemeat as you've made. If you don't want to use little tarts and you want to make more of a hand pie or like an empanada, take about a six inch portion of the dough do the filling, do the powdered sugar, do the egg wash, and then crimp the edges. Don't forget to vent it, and it'll go in the oven just like any of the others. You'll bake your pies in an oven, 400 degrees and preheated, for at least 20 minutes. I kept mine in for 30 minutes to ensure that they were completely cooked and golden brown. And there you have it. Morgantha's Dream Pastries for your Curse of Strahd campaign to set the scene 
or your encounters at the Bone Grinder. Thanks for watching, and happy Grimtober.